TypeScript, it's big, it's scary, and time-wise, it's one of the best investments you can make as a developer. Here's seven incredibly useful TypeScript types, like Prettyfy, that Matt Pocock, a fellow YouTuber, came up with, that gives you, no matter how nested your types are, all the properties inside of a type. And six more, here we go. Let's start with one of the most used types in general, and that is if we had a constant person, and that is gonna be equal to John. Then how do we get the type of this person? Well, we can just say, type person is going to be equal to type of person. And just by doing that, we will get this value, John, right here, inside of this type person right here. Now, how does this work for objects? This can be really useful if we had an object with values like the name, which is going to be John again, and then an age that is going to be 24. If we do type person is going to be equal to type of object, then we're gonna get this, the name as the string and the age as the number. But what if we only wanted the keys? That is super useful. You're gonna do it a lot in TypeScript. You only want the name and the age without their respective types. You don't need them in this case. Well, how can we do that? We can simply say key of type of object. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna give us the name and the age regardless of the values that they have. So we only have the name and the age. One of the most useful types is the return type for functions. Say you had a regular arrow function just like this and you return a value from this function. Let's give this value a string type just like this and then we return it. Now how do we get the value that this function right here returns outside of the function? type return is going to be equal to and what goes here, right? How can we get the string or whatever this function right here returns down here? With our existing knowledge, we could do something like this. Type return is going to be equal to, and we know the type of property by now, type of val. And this would technically work. We would have whatever the function returns as a type, but we can't really use this type outside of the function scope. There is no way to export it or get the value down here. So what we can do is instead of declaring this inside of the function, we can use a really handy TypeScript utility type, and that is going to be the return type. That is nothing you need to import this is a built-in utility type and we can simply pass the type of func in here and thereby we will get the return value as a string outside of the scope of the function. Now what happens if this function is asynchronous? That's going to do something to our return type. We can see now there is a promise of a string and not the string directly and mostly that's probably not what you want man. So what you can do is wrap this in something called awaited. Again nothing you need to import. This is a built-in utility type and what that's gonna do is give us the result of the awaited promise of this function. If I just hover over the return, you can see it's just a plain string and we can actually work with that. Now assume this scenario right here. We have a main type which consists of a name as a string and an age of a number. And also we have a nested type. This is the main type merged with another type and that adds one property that is the isDeveloper as a boolean. That means our nested type is now the main type and the isDeveloper thereby encompassing all three of these values. But if we hover over the nested type we only see one value. And that's not really handy if we import this from somewhere and want to know which property properties, all of them exist in this nested type. We can't see that right here. So we would have to click on the main type, go to definition, and imagine if this was nested through five levels. This would be incredibly annoying. Now exactly for this use case, so we can see all properties at one look, there's a super handy type that Matt Poker came up with, and that is called Prettify. With this Prettify, we only have three lines of code. That's literally it. It's only this right here. We can assign any type like I don't know, and that is going to be the Prettify, and we're going to pass as a generic, the type we want to figure out, the nested type, for example. And if I now hover over the I don't know, you can see all values, no matter how nested they are. These right here are also super useful. We have an interface to do, and every to do has a title and a description. That's it for this example. And we also have a function to update a to do after the initial creation. The function takes two arguments, that is the to do we want to update, and the fields we want to update, like the description or both if we want to. And we just do this updating by spreading in all the values of the initial to-do, then overwriting them with all the fields we want to update. Let's create a to-do of type to-do. That is going to be our initial to-do with a title and a description, just like our interface demands. And now let's try updating this to-do. Const updated to-do is going to be the function we can just call right here 
pass in or initial to do and then the values we want to update. For example, the description and the title. But as you can see right here, both of these, the description and the title are demanded. We can't just update the description to be something else. In fact, TypeScript will complain that the title is not being passed. Property title is missing in type. But that's super unpractical. We don't want to pass all the values again. Imagine if this had like 10 fields, that would be awful. What we can do is wrap or to do that we want to update in something called a partial. And what this partial is going to do is essentially it's going to make all values optional. We have to pass none of these. That means we could even pass just nothing. Just an empty object would work just fine. If I remove the string and the syntax errors, we could just pass an empty object. And if I press control and spacebar right here to get TypeScript IntelliSense, all values are now optional. Now the opposite of that is the required required. There we go. That's going to make all of these, even if they were optional originally, required. So now we have to pass both. It's the opposite of the partial. Okay, last two ones also very, very useful, and that is omit and exclude. Again, we have or to do with a title and a description. And let's create an object that is of this type. Let's give it or to do type. So we get TypeScript IntelliSense that's going to throw an error. Great, because the title and description are missing. So let's pass those. Now, when you create stuff in a database, for example, much of the the fields are already done for you, like the created add property, the updated add property, and so on. And there's a really useful type that makes you not need to pass those again. Let's call the result of this omitted. And this is going to be equal to a TypeScript utility type called omit. We can pass in or type like the to do up here. And then we can define the values we want to omit. Let's close that off. And in here, we could say anything. We don't get TypeScript IntelliSense for this. But for example, we could omit the title from this object or from this type right here. And the result would be just the description. So imagine there was like a created add property as a date. That is often the case. Let's comment this out with databases, right? You don't want to pass this again. That doesn't make a whole lot of sense. So we can instead just exclude or omit it, that's what it's called, the created ad, and the result is going to be just the title and the description that we now need to pass in to create a new object inside of our database. The same thing, unfortunately, doesn't work with more complex objects. Let's say type shapes is going to be either a kind of circle with a radius of number, or it could also be the way we declare or in TypeScript is using this type op at uh, this, this pipe operator, that's what it's called. Or it could be, let's say, kind of square, and it gets an x value that is of type number. So we have a circle and a square. There we go. That looks a bit better. And if we try the same logic, the same knowledge again, let's call this omitted. And this is going to be equal to the omit, where it's pass in or type, that is going to be the shapes. And we want to exclude all where the kind is circle. So we only get the square, for example. How would we do that? Well, judging by the same logic, we could pass like the object, right, where the kind is circle and try to omit that from our object. But that is not valid omit syntax, we're going to get an error. The type doesn't make a whole lot of sense. And we get a type error right here. So we can't use that. Instead, to exclude where the kind is a certain value, like circle or square or whatever, we can use the exclude TypeScript utility type. It's going to do the same thing as the omit, but it's more for complicated objects. Now, as the result, we're only left with a square and fully excluded what we did didn't want in our type. And that is the circle. Hey, I really hope you enjoyed the video and these TypeScript types. I think they're a massive time saver, super useful. You don't even need to import anything. They're right there out of the box. Use them to your advantage. Well, you now know how to. I wish you all the best for your future projects and a lot of fun building your own cool stuff with this. I'm going to see you in the next video. Have a good one and bye bye.